This video was sponsored by Soba, an amazing app for creating your dream game. In Tower Defense Simulator, there are seven different game modes, that being Normal Mode, Multi Mode, Follow Mode, Badlands 2, Pizza Party, Polluted Wastelands 2, and Hardcore Mode. For a new player, it may be difficult to beat these modes, especially the more difficult ones. You may not have all the towers available, so it might be difficult for you to find a good strategy. In this video, I'm going to be showing the best and easiest ways to triumph these game modes, hopefully making your life a little easier. For our first game mode, we have Normal Mode. Beating this game mode is actually super cheap and simple as it only requires two towers, the Hunter and Farm. The Farm and Hunter only cost a combined 2,850 coins, so it's very easy to get as a beginner. For this strat, all you have to do is spam as many Hunters as you can, while also making sure that you farm properly. To make this more reliable, I'd recommend mainly using level 0 Hunters as they have the best value. However, you will need to get a couple of Hunters to at least level 2 to ensure they can deal with the hidden enemies. You should only upgrade them to max level once you've placed the max amount of 40. Also, playing on an easy map like Honey Valley can make your game a lot easier, so that's something to keep in mind. Using this strat, you won't have a very hard time beating Normal Mode. For Multi Mode, there's a couple of methods you could use. First off, and by far the cheapest loadout, is using the Ace Pilot and Sniper on Abandoned City. Because of how long this map is, and the massive amount of room for Cliff Towers, you're actually able to beat Multi Mode using only the Sniper and Ace Pilot. Considering that the Sniper is a tower that you get for free when starting the game, and the Ace Pilot only costs 1,500 coins in a shop, this is a pretty damn cheap strategy. You essentially use the ace pilot in the early game because of its amazing value, and then you later use a sniper to take care of the molten boss. Also, because both of these towers can't be stunned by the molten boss, it makes it a lot easier for them to kill it. This strategy is pretty effective, and it's not very hard to pull off. I got this strategy from Encrypted, so I put a link to his video in the description. However, if you don't want to be stuck using a single map, I'd recommend using a militant and farm. They cost a total of 4,000 coins and make beating molten mode a lot easier. You also need to bring the scout for the early game, but you get this tower for free. Similar to the hunter strat, you basically just need to spam militants the entire game, but this time make sure you're farming properly. The added income from the farm and the higher DPS of the militant makes the strat a lot easier. Also, just like for the hunter, I'd recommend spamming level 0 militants as they have the best value. After you place 40 of them, then you should max them out to max level. This strat is not very difficult to pull off, however, if you'd like some extra help on it, I've put in the description a link to a tutorial by Eggcrypted on how to properly do it. Next up, we got follow mode. Follow mode is a lot harder than multi mode, so you need a couple more towers. The cheapest loadout I know of is Farm, Militant, Ace, and Commander. Although it's possible to beat solo, I highly recommend playing with others. Being in a squad makes your life much easier as you can place a combined 80 towers instead of just 40, doubling the max DPS you can achieve. In the early game, prioritize getting a level 2 ace as soon as possible, as with good placement, that will be enough to solo all the way until wave 10. During these 10 waves, make sure you're farming as efficiently as possible. You're gonna need as much money as possible if you want to pull this off. Get a militant for the wave 10 boss, upgrade your ace a bit, and try to get 8 level 3 farms as soon as possible. Doing this solo is extremely difficult and I couldn't even pull it off. However, I've managed to get really close and I've heard that it's possible. Regardless, I highly recommend playing with others. As I mentioned before, being in a squad will double the max DPS you can achieve and make it way easier to beat the final boss. Now, that's it for the normal game modes. Next up, we have the special game modes, that being Badlands 2, Pizza Party, and Polluted Wastelands 2. These game modes are a lot more difficult than the normal game modes, so the strategies are going to get a lot more difficult from this point on. But before I show you how to beat the special game modes, let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Soba. Soba is an online platform similar to Roblox that allows users to create their own games. What makes Soba so great is that users don't need to know how to code, which can be a real pain on Roblox. If you've ever coded anything, you know that coding consists of frustrating errors that take hours to fix. Instead of actually making the game, you spend your time staring at a buggy mess that just doesn't do what you want. In comparison, making your dream game on Soba is super easy, and you simply just connect blocks that have a clear and understandable uses. Also, you don't need an expensive computer, as Soba lets you build your game directly from your phone, supporting iOS and Android devices. You and your friends can explore and enjoy the hundreds of multiplayer games on Soba, each game being a unique player-made creation. Soba is starting the first beta testing, and if you'd like to get exclusive early access to the game, then you can sign up using my referral code and the form link down below. Huge thanks for Soba for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to business. For our first special game mode, let's take a look at Badlands 2. This game mode is significantly harder than follow mode for two main reasons. First of all, there's three lanes, tripling the amount of enemies you have to deal with. On top of that, each enemy has a mutation modifier, making them more and more powerful every wave. Because of all these extra features, beating Badlands 2 solo is not possible. The least amount of players needed is two, however, it is significantly easier to play if you have a squad of players. If you don't have enough players for a team of four, and you have to play duo, 
then you can use this Badlands Duo strat by Moxie. It's not very beginner friendly, and both players need to have the Accelerator, but if you're desperate, I guess this is an option. A strategy I would much more recommend is the Quest strat, which requires 4 players, but doesn't need any special towers except for 1 player. This is actually a strat for quick draw, but if you just want to win, you can make it much easier for yourself by placing the early game towers in the middle of the map instead of at the entrances. This will beat the game slower, but be a lot less difficult to pull off. This is because the enemies will group together, making it much easier to take them out. Player 1 will need the farm, shotgunner, ranger, electroshocker, and ace pilot. Player 2 will need the farm, shotgunner, ranger, medic, and ace. Player 3 will need the farm, shotgunner, ranger, DJ, and ace. Player 4 will need the farm, golden scout, accelerator, commander, and turret. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find any reliable strats that don't have any special towers, but for this strat, only one player needs to have them, so you could just find one sweaty guy to carry the team. If you want some help, you can use the party finder channel on my discord. Hopefully, it won't take too long for you to find somebody. Next up, we have pizza party, the game mode with a furry as the final boss. This is the best mode for gaining coins, so it can be extremely useful to know how to beat it. You also unlock the warden, which is a solid S tier tower. There's a couple ways to beat this without any special towers. If you want to play duo, you can use Hamari's Spring Trap Party strategy, which only requires two players. Player 1 needs to farm, ranger, shotgunner, electroshocker, and DJ booth. Player 2 needs to farm, mortar, shotgunner, turret, and commander. This is a pretty difficult strat, so you probably won't beat it on the first try. If you instead want to play as a squad, you can use Silly Uki and APC's Violet Party strategy, which is a lot easier and also requires no special towers. This is a speedrunning strat, so if you just want to try and beat the game mode, you can choose to not skip every wave. Play 1 is going to need the Ranger, a DPS tower of their choice, Commander, Shotgunner, or Farm. Player 2 is going to need the Ranger, Electroshocker, DJ Booth, Warden, and Farm. Player 3 is going to need a DPS tower of their choice, Ace Pilot, Medic, Shotgunner, and Farm. Player 4 is going to need a DPS tower, Ace Pilot, Pyromancer, Shotgunner, and Farm. Depending on what DPS tower you use, the difficulty of the strat will vary. However, it should be pretty easy regardless. Next up, we have the hardest out of the three special game modes, Polluted Wastelands 2. Beating this game mode only gives you a free premium skin crate, but nothing special like the other game modes. If you still want to beat it, then I'd recommend using the Nuclear Shredding Strategy by Anta X. This strat requires a team of four, with each player needing the following loadouts. Player 1 needs to farm, Ace Pilot, Turret, Medic, and Ranger. Player 2 needs to farm, Ace Pilot, Turret, Pyromancer, Minigunner. Player 3 needs to farm, Ace Pilot, Turret, Commander, and Electroshocker. And Player 4 needs to farm, Ace Pilot, Turret, DJ Booth, and Minigunner. For Player 2 and 4, you can replace the Minigunner with a stronger DPS tower to make your game easier. However, if you don't have anything better, then stick with the strat and it should work. Now that we've covered all the special game modes, we have one last game mode to cover, which is arguably the hardest out of the 7, Hardcore Mode. Hardcore mode is the only way you can earn gems, which is the currency needed to purchase the Accelerator and Engineer. The Accelerator is arguably the best DPS tower in the game, so it can be incredibly useful when trying to beat difficult challenges. Needless to say, it's definitely a good idea to learn how to effectively beat Hardcore mode. The best way to do this is using the Lucille strategy, which requires 3 players and no special towers. Each player has to have the following loadout. Player 1 needs to farm, Ranger, Warden, DJ Booth, and Turret. Player 2 needs to farm, Ranger, Ace Pilot, Commander, and Turret. And Player 3 needs to farm, Ranger, Pyromancer, Medic, and Turret. Not only is this the easiest non-special tower strategy to beat this mode, it's an extremely fast way of getting gems. If you can triumph each game, which you should be doing if you properly follow the strat, you'll be making 600 plus gems per hour. That means you'll be able to afford the Accelerator after about 4 hours and the Engineer after about 7.5 hours, which is a lot faster than suicide grinding. But with that said, that's it for this video. If you know of any other better methods of beating these game modes, let me know in the comments down below. I tried my best to find the best strategies, however, there's probably Probably some that I missed. And before I end this video, I'd like to thank John Joe 684, The Figure, Nimbus the Wicker, Dog Name Bruv, Solox, Potted Sprout, Elixir US, Grow, Dad, Sniper Mask, Mr. Autistic Man, Mr. Giggles, Sir Lag, Shumbus, Stay Hydrated, Adam, Zeduled, You May Never Know, Insane Catalupe, Guest, CIA Agent Mert, Noob Gamer, Jason Legacy, and Rosalie Ascona for supporting my content by becoming a channel member. If you'd like to help me out and get some special perks in the meantime, like being my friend on Roblox, consider becoming a channel member today. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Bluehead Mafia. My name is Corso and I'll see y'all in the next video.